Welcome back to County Line Sports. I'm your host, Bill Downing, and the West Michigan Ironmen, that's exactly what they are. They are iron strong, and they really showed it to River City, who handed them their only loss of the season. And now they're tied up top the Midwest Division. And live on the phone, we have head coach Tyrese Link. And coach, first of all, congratulations on the big win, and welcome back to the show. Well, Bill, it's a pleasure. I appreciate it once again. Um, having us on the show but uh yeah it was an exciting day last saturday well i tell you one thing for sure the fans are really really uh buying into the west michigan ironman because the foundry aka the lc walk arena is absolutely rocking you guys have got the fans right where you want them you guys are playing some great football and you beat a team that last time you played them you had a pretty big lead and allowed them to come back and a little bit of revenge took place last Saturday. You know what? Uh, first of all, it's the community. The community's been outstanding. Um, every game has grown, and mm-hmm. the attention they've given us is is, uh, is is somewhat mesmerizing. Uh, the guys recognize it. We recognize it. And, and first of all, we appreciate the community. But the game itself, uh, yeah, it was definitely a chance for us to get some revenge, prove that we we you know we belong, um, prove that uh, the get first game. Um, we kind of let slip away on our own, Mm -hmm. Um, and Mm -hmm. the guys knew that and came out and was focused. Absolutely, and when you take a look at uh, what weapons you have offensively and defensively, I think it's kind of neat that uh, uh, one of your stars, as they call him, Rojo, Ronald Johnson, you know, the fact that so many people key in on him, it leaves Corey Johnson wide open, it leaves Campbell wide open, it leaves other weapons open for Alex Carter to find and I tell you, it's got to be easy to be a coach. I know it's stressful but it's got to be easy when you know you have that many weapons and you know that they're going to key on one person, which leaves everyone else wide open. You know, uh, yeah, Coach Ferguson and Coach White, who are our offensive coordinators have done a great job scheming each week. Mm-hmm. Um, knowing that Ronald is, is definitely a key target on everybody's mind when we're, when they come to play us. Uh, and frankly, these other receivers have learned the game and, and picked up anywhere where they left open. So we definitely have an uh, offensive juggernaut there that really allows me not to have to worry too much um, but don't get me wrong, I'm an offensive man by heart, so right. I pay attention a lot. <laughs> Absolutely, and uh, when you got so many weapons such as Corey Johnson, Ronald Johnson, Donovan Campbell, I mean, you've got uh, Eric Thompson, I mean, both offensively and defensively, he is an absolute stud. Him and Derek Vandenbosch were the uh, AIF League Players of the Week, week last week, and I tell you, Coach, very, very well earned, especially uh, Mr. Thompson, who uh, ended up getting that game-winning uh, kickoff return back against the Chicago Blitz. And I tell you, uh, Mr. Vandenbosch, too, he's having himself a stellar career already. He took the opening fumble in for a touchdown in that game also. Well, you're talking about two guys that they really thrive off of making plays. I mean, the more they the more they can get around and the more they can fly around the field, the more comfortable they are. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's well-deserved. They, were, they put in the hard work during the week and getting the player of the week is well-deserved. Oh, absolutely. And now let me ask you this. When you see uh, the, the mature uh, growth of your, your team, such as your starting quarterback, Alex Carter, the confidence that he has with your offensive line, the time he's getting to throw, um, it, it, a lot of work goes into this because, again, this is only eight-man football, basically, and you got one man in motion, so he's got to time that correctly. It's not just a regular quarterback position where it's like hut, hut, hike. I mean, you got to. it's all about timing. Uh, with the Indoor Football League. And I tell you, Alex Carter has really, really risen uh, to be a solid leader on the offensive side. Well, you know, a lot of people don't, don't know much uh, regarding Alex. Alex is a premier quarterback at the college level. Um, he's done some outstanding things on the arena level. Mm-hmm. So really, it wasn't him that needed to adjust. It was a lot of us that didn't know the game that needed to kind of be able to be in spots that he expected us to be in. Mm-hmm. And he's done a great job of helping mentor a lot of our great athletes on how to be uh, an arena football player. And when you talk about that, there's there's not a lot of quarterbacks that can do that. No, and one of the neat things that you know you see a lot of throwing in the arena football, but you also have a fullback that is not afraid to lower his head down. It reminds me a lot of Mike Allstott back in the days. This guy's an absolute bull, and if you need those extra yards on those close in touchdown runs, uh, he's definitely your guy. Yeah, I mean, we've the whole roster. You know, I'm I'm impressed by mm-hmm. 
you know, these guys' humbleness to be able to just take their role, whatever role that is, and, and the chemistry that's built from that. And, you know, you got some running backs that would love to be in the 11 man game carrying the ball 20 times a game and yeah. getting 100 yards. But they obviously know what their role is and they've accepted it well. Well, let me ask you this, coach. You know, you going from high school and doing all the, the coaching that you've done, how much difference, how much of a learning curve has it been so far for you and uh, some of your coaches that maybe haven't coached in the arena football to uh, get a grasp of the indoor game? You know, I did a lot of research prior to taking the job. And, like I said earlier in the year, I've watched probably more film in the last eight months than I've watched probably in the last two years, which mm -hmm. I watched a lot of film prior to this. But the game itself has definitely taught me um, how you got to have some patience. you got to understand mm -hmm. um, there's never a lead that's too big. Right. You know, when you come from 11, man, if you're up by 28, you, you know, you don't want to have the image of running the score up. Um, in this game, if you're up by 28, you're really only up by three. Right. Oh, you got to keep <laughs> right. going. Exactly. Um, so we've learned um, overall how to kind of control the game a little more. Um, I let the first game go, and uh, from a coaching standpoint, I didn't understand at what point you're supposed to do some things. And mm -hmm. It was a valuable learning lesson for the players and myself. I tell you, you must have watched a ton of tape on River City because you turned it back up against them for sure. And, you know, one of the names that I've noticed uh, uh, defensively, uh, Ronnie Nelson, just the guy is just an absolute beast start to finish. Uh, your defense reminds me a lot of, uh, of the Arizona um, Wildcats, the Desert Swarm. You guys are swarming from one side of the ball to the other, and there's just no stop. It's whistle to whistle, and these guys, uh, your defense is absolutely stuck. Out. Yeah, it uh, took kind of took phase after the first game, and we looked at some of the errors we made and realized there was a lot of um, things that we kind of did it to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And Ronnie actually learned a lot from that as well. But he's definitely the engine of what makes us go. Um, we were able to pick up some other key pickups that allowed him to get some rest, mm -hmm. which makes him even more dangerous. Um, and so. You know, there's no doubt our defense is going to continue to grow, and I think if our defense can continue to grow, we're going to be really tough to deal with. Absolutely, and you bring up new additions. You got three this last week. Uh, Jamie Potts, a local kid that played at Grand Valley State and played in the Muskegon area for high school. You got Malcolm Speller and Deontay Cruz. Uh, let the listeners in on your new additions, because I know Jamie Potts, when you look in the scoring column, uh, he was able to drill uh, the extra points and field goal attempts. The, the guy was money. Yeah, Jamie is much more than a kicker, um, even though the kicker is a very important part to us. Mm -hmm. um, but he was able to join us on short notice kick. We had a plan for him to get so many reps on offense and so many on defense. And what do you know, his first rep on defense, he goes out and makes an a incredible <laughs> interception on a uh, running back wheel route. Uh, he's, he's, he's a dynamic player. He can play everything but offensive line. He can, mm -hmm. he can pretty much put him anywhere. Um, so I'm, I'm really pleased with that addition. Um, as well as Deontay Cruz and, and Malcolm Speller. They stepped in, and, and boy, you want to talk about helping us improve on our offensive line. Um, we've got one player who's down and hurt, and hopefully we'll get him back, and Kenner. Um, mm -hmm. And once that happens, I'm, I'm going to feel really good about our protection. In all actuality, Deontay Cruz is a defensive player who's just accepted his role on our team and and been playing wow. offense, but you'll see much more of him on defense as, as we go. you got to absolutely love that, the unselfishness, knowing that he's a defensive player and you're saying, hey, yeah, I really need you on the offensive line, and he's doing it, no questions asked. That just goes to show uh, that they love the coaching staff and they love the system that they're under. And uh, being 3-1 and one now, tied with the lead, I, I give you guys the number one spot. A little bias here there, Coach. But uh, you guys are 3-1, and <laughs> one, and you're bringing in a team, not this weekend, but next weekend, Cincinnati. Uh, the Bulldogs, which uh, from what I'm hearing is, is a traveling team uh, that is in the league that you guys are going to have to play, I believe, almost back-to-back -back weekends. Yeah, we have them, and then we have Northern Kentucky, who's really anxious to get in and get after us. And right. We'll follow back up with Cincinnati. Um, this Cincinnati team, not a lot of things uh, to be known about them because they're, they're just now getting into it, but they had one game at River City, and I think what happened in that game, the score isn't indicative to really who they are. Mm hmm um, they were, you know, I think they learned a little bit about the game, and I expect them to be much, much better. 
by the time they walk into the foundry. So we got to take these guys as serious as anybody else. Well, let me ask you this, Coach, and, and I know that you have uh, veterans on this team already. You're you're only a th- at three and one, and and they know what the ultimate goal is is to get into the playoffs and win the championship. Um, how do you keep this team kind of focused on the task at hand, knowing that hey, you know what, every game from here on out could be a trap game. Even though we're three and one, we have to be ready for each and every team every week, or otherwise, you know, they can come up and bite you. Well, football is, is, is simple when it comes to that. It's mm-hmm. uh, one man trying to impose their will on another. Mm-hmm. And I got a feeling everybody has got an idea they want to come and impose their will on us as much as every, as possible. So I got to remind our team of that. And at the end of the day, we're supposed to be professionals and we got to treat everybody with respect to right. be able to get that respect. Um, so head down, move forward. And it really, it's every, every game is important. Absolutely, Coach. Well, you're a heck of a guy. I tell you, I've gotten to know you, know you here through the season, and uh, you really have some great focus, and this team is, is just exciting to watch. And I tell you, home field, I think, means everything. The foundry is rocking. You've got so many fans jamming into uh, the building week in and week out, Coach. It's a great, great story, and it just keeps getting better. Um, now, let me ask you this. How many teams, I think maybe I have asked you this, being at 3-1, and one, how many more wins do you think you're going to need in in order to clinch a playoff spot, boy, that's a that's a trap question, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, my, I'll say we need to win them all. Okay, um, but in theory, uh, I think you know, ideally, uh, we have an eight game schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, we need to come out of it bare minimum. Um, we, we, you know, one more loss would be all that I would want to right. see. Because right. the idea is we want home, we want home field advantage. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you, we need to win them all. But realistically, I think you know, one, you know. We can win two more games. We'll right. be in good position. Well, let me ask you this: for like in arena football, I know that they have a designated place for championships and so forth for their championship game. Uh, does the number one seed, let's just say the Ironman, go all the way through their number one and they win going into the championship game? Would the championship game be at the Foundry, or is there a designated place that every year that this uh, championship game is played? Uh, the number one seed would, uh, if they make it to the championship, would receive the championship game. So, wow. uh, if we we're fortunate to do what we plan on doing, it would be at the Foundry. Oh my gosh, Coach, that's just, that's something. One game at a time, though. But I tell you, the dream is there. I could see it, and I tell you, the fans absolutely love it. I love it, and you know, to actually get down on the field and, and talk with some of the players and the coaches after the games, uh, you get to see, you know, genuinely. These are some pretty big guys. You know, one of the guys that I found to be uh, one of the biggest I've ever seen, Donovan Campbell. He reminds me a lot of Earl Campbell from back in the days. This guy is a beast from head to shoulders. Yeah, he's uh, he's definitely a physical fit young man and, and, and carries himself extremely well. Mm-hmm. I've known Donovan since he was, uh, I believe, a sophomore in college. Wow. I uh, played against him and, and – He's just turned out to be a dynamic young man, Mm -hmm. not just on the football field, but off. I mean, anytime a family member has a chance to bring their kids down the field, I strongly recommend they they have a chance to meet Donovan Campbell. Yeah, absolutely. I had a chance to talk to quite a few of them, and he was definitely one on my radar. And I tell you, you talk about the maturity, you know, what he talks about. It's not I, I, I. It's team when you talk to him, and that's what I really enjoy. Uh, There's no I in team, and he definitely knows it, that he is a part of the puzzle and part of the equation, and I think that carries it a long way. Coach, all I can say is congratulations on your great start. We, We don't have another game now until the 23rd when you bring in the Bulldogs of Cincinnati, but congratulations on your great start. We will talk to you uh, after the next game and uh, have a great week of practice and good luck. And uh, we'll talk to you after Cincinnati. Well, Bill, hey, we missed you this past Saturday. I'm, I'm hoping you're feeling better, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on the 23rd. And thanks for the time. Absolutely, coach. No problem. Thank you very much. As head coach Tyrese Link of the West Michigan Ironmen, three and one. They're off to the 23rd when they bring in the Cincinnati Bulldogs to the Foundry. You want to get down there and enjoy some great American Indoor Football League action with the West Michigan Ironmen at the Foundry. We'll be right back with more County Line Sports right after this.